Hey everyone, Nate from Nate Plummer Acting and Singing Lessons here back with another episode of Backstage with Nate. On this channel I do videos on acting, singing, auditioning, and of course the business side of being a performer so that you have all the information you need to find your stage door. On this episode we'll be talking about resumes. What are they? What should they look like? What should go on them? And more importantly, how often what's on your resume is less important than how it looks. Stay tuned. If you're watching this episode, it means you're probably as confused as most are about what an actor's resume should really look like. An actor's resume is very different than that of other industries because an actor's resume is formatted to be one page and to be put on the back of an 8 by 10 photo. So, to me, the very first step you should do when building your resume is to create your document to be 8 by 10. That way you can save yourself the trouble of having to scale it later. You can do this in most softwares under the page setup function. Let's start with what actually goes on your resume. So the first thing right up at the top is your name, big and bold across the top. This is the most important part of your resume because if the casting team doesn't know your name, they can't cast you. So make sure that it's big and bold and easy to read. Below that, you're going to want to list any union affiliations you may have, such as Actors Equity or Screen Actors Guild. After that comes your contact information, your telephone number, your email, your website. If you have an agent, make sure you list the information they'd like you to list in the way they'd like it listed. Once you have all your contact information, you list your personal details, such as your height, your weight, your hair color, eye color. If you're a singer, this is where you list your voice type and range. A really important thing about listing your personal details, make sure that they're honest. Casting teams are very smart and they can tell the difference between someone who says they're 5'8 and they're really 5'6 or someone who says they're 140 pounds but hasn't been on a scale in a little while and actually weighs 160. Being honest on your resume is super important because just like so many of the other details on your resume, it shows who you are not only as a performer but as a person as well. Alright, so now let's get to the part that you probably really want to know about. How you list your credits on your resume. If you're just starting out and you don't have a ton of credits, it's perfectly fine to just list them all in one big block rather than dividing them out like you see in other resumes with subcategories like regional or national tours or educational. You can subdivide when you have more credits later on, but at this point, if you'd rather just keep them in one big block, that's perfectly fine. When you list your credits on your resume, there are certain things you want to make sure that you include. The first being the production name, the second being the character you played, the third being where you did the production, and the fourth being the director of the production. Now, again, personally, I don't list every director on my resume. The reason is, I've worked with some directors that, as amazing as they are, casting teams in New York might not recognize them. A rule about listing names on your resume. Make sure that if you are going to name drop, there are actually people that are going to be recognized and they're people that can actually serve as a really good reference for you. So, for example, as awesome of a person as your high school drama teacher might be, they're probably not someone that the New York casting teams are going to recognize. So, I would leave them off of your resume. But let's say that you've had the opportunity to work with a big name New York director and they've had a really awesome experience with you, that's probably someone you want to list. So, Pick and choose who you want to have on your resume and again make sure that they're going to provide you with the best reference possible. Below your credits, then you list your special skills. I'm going to do an entire episode about special skills. In the meantime, the big thing to remember is that special skills are things that a casting team might be looking for that could help them in their production. Things like dialect, accents, specific types of dance, magic, maybe you're really good with kids. Any of these things might enhance the production and might give you that leg up in casting. One special skill that a lot of actors leave off of their resume is having a valid driver's license. This is actually a very important skill to list because a lot of touring companies are looking for actors who can drive, specifically if they are looking for actors for what are known as van or truck tours because those actors are probably going to have to be helping drive the production around the country. If you are interested in those types of productions, make sure that you list a driver's license on your resume. When listing your special skills, start with your strongest skill first. Make sure that if you're going to give them one that you want them to know that you can do, list that in the first slot. After that, list your skills in any order, but save your most unique special skill for last. This is the one that casting teams are going to ask you to probably demonstrate in the room if they're really interested in you and your special skills. This is awesome because it gives you the opportunity to connect with the casting team in a way that maybe other performers don't. Again, showing them not only who you are as a performer, but as a person as well. This is great because at the end of the day when they're 
flipping through their stacks of resumes and headshots, they can look at their notes, see that awesome connection they had with you, and more than likely, they're gonna increase your chances in getting that call back. The last category on your resume is your training. Now, a big, really important thing here, make sure you list only training that is applicable to the performing arts. For example, if you have a nursing degree, as amazing as that is, you probably don't wanna list that as your training on your resume. You might wanna list it as a special skill, especially if you're doing TV and film, because that could give you the leg up in booking that uh, medical drama role. But in the training section, we're really looking for specific classes and degrees that are really gonna tell us about your training and your background in the performing arts. When listing the types of training you've had, make sure that you list what you studied and with whom, not where you studied it. For example, if you took a course called Magical Dance at your local community theater, that doesn't really mean anything to a casting team in New York. Break it down for us. List tap, ballet, jazz, any of the types of dance you studied in that class, and then list the teachers that taught the class. Again, remember, the teachers on your resume are also your references. So when you list teachers on your resume, make sure you only list those who are gonna speak highly of you, not only as a student, but as a performer as well. If you've done any industry workshops with say casting directors or other directors, you can list them under your training section as well. A note about listing industry professionals on your resume, make sure that their names are spelled correctly. Nothing will keep you from booking a role faster than if someone behind the table sees that their name is spelled wrong on your resume. Here's a pro tip for listing casting directors on your resume. If a casting director is a member of the Casting Society of America, they're gonna list the letter CSA after their name. This is a really important thing for them and something that they're very proud of. So make sure that you show them that you respect that, include those letters after their name. If you're uncertain if a casting director is a member of CSA, all you have to do is Google their name, look for some credits, and more than likely, if they're a member, CSA will be listed in those credits. Now that you have the layout down, let's make sure that the details on your resume make it look as professional as possible. When choosing a font for your resume, make sure that it's easy to read. We always wanna start with the name and with the headings. Should you decide to use a character font for this? That's fine, it shows your personality, which is a really important part of your resume. But make sure that the character font is still easy to read, that we can make out every single letter. If they can't read your name, you're not going to be cast. Same thing with the headings. If they're distracted by the font, you're not gonna book the role. When looking for a font for the actual body of your resume, for actual credits and other details, make sure that it's a font that we're very used to reading in a small size, something like, Arial or Times New Roman. Think college term paper when choosing a font for the actual body of your resume. If you decide you wanna use color on your resume, I would suggest using it sparingly. Again, treat it like a character font, only for names and for headings. The darker the color you choose, the better it will be to read. Brighter colors are really hard on the eyes, so we want to avoid colors like lime green or yellow or orange, as these could be really hard for the casting director to actually read the details. If they can't read the details, you're not gonna get cast. If you really wanna save yourself the headache of trying to figure out if a color is good enough to be read, I would just suggest designing your resume in black and white, save yourself the headache and the few cents because typically printing in black and white is cheaper than printing in color. When laying out your resume, it's really hard to make sure that all of the credits line up with perfect lines when you're typing them in with the space bar or with the tab key. I suggest using the table function in your software, design it with the number of rows and columns you need to get all of your information in, type it in, and when you're done, you can just make the grid lines invisible. You'll have professional, clean looking lines, and it will make your resume really seem like the professional resume it is. When choosing credits for your resume, make sure that at all times the credits are telling the story you want to tell. If you're just starting out, it's perfectly fine to include educational credits on your resume, things from high school and college, as these are the credits you have. Casting directors aren't expecting you to have a ton of professional credits, and they want to be part of your journey towards becoming a star. So they fully appreciate and understand that these are the types of credits you have. Don't be afraid to list them on your resume. When listing your high school and college credits, I strongly suggest that they meet two criteria. The first, it's that it's a character that you could play again right now. A lot of times in high school and college, we play characters that we're not really age appropriate for. Those aren't things that we're probably gonna be able to play professionally, so I would just keep those off your resume. But if it's a credit that you're really, really proud of, then it's worth keeping on. I wouldn't say to keep it on your resume if it's not something that you're proud of, regardless 
of the age of the character. If a casting team at any point asks you about a credit on your resume, you want to make sure that it's one that you can speak highly of, that you can say that the entire experience was really an amazing adventure. If they can see that you're proud and excited about your work, they're probably going to want you to be proud and excited of their project too. This connection that you just shared with them is probably going to help increase your chances of getting that callback. At some point, you will have so many credits that you will actually have to start taking things off of your resume. We don't want your resume to be so jam-packed with information that it's hard to read. White space is key. I suggest sticking to the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 text, 20% white space. Make sure that you leave white space up on either side of your name. This is a great pro tip because if a casting team is going to write notes about you, chances are this is where they're going to want to write them. So if they decided in the room that you're going to get a callback, they're probably going to write it here. When they're flipping through their stack of headshots and resumes at the end of the day, that's where they're going to look. If they had to write callback anywhere else, they might miss it when they're flipping through the stack. If they're flipping through at the end of the day super quick and they miss it, it could keep you from having a chance for an awesome callback. Make your resume look professional. Don't throw this together like some last minute acting class assignment. Take the time, plan it out because your resume represents you. It represents you when you're not in the room, say for a self submit or if they're deciding on a callback. So if they're looking at your resume, make sure that it tells the story you want to tell. Now, you've probably heard the saying, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. I say design your resume with that idea in mind. Design your resume so that it looks like that of a Broadway star. If your resume looks professional and looks like that of a Broadway star, chances are those credits will likely follow. Resumes are so easy to update nowadays. With having the computer right at your fingertips, it's so easy to go in, make quick changes. So there's never any reason why you need to scribble something out in pencil or pen or add things in in pencil and pen. Remember, scribbles are for kids, not for Broadway stars. If you're a performer who auditions for multiple formats, such as TV, film, commercial, you're probably going to want a different resume for every format. This is because you're going to want to put whatever you're auditioning for right at the top. If it's a film audition, that goes at the top. If it's a TV audition, that goes at the top. Now, each particular part of the industry has specific ways that their credits should be listed. TV and film credits should have characters that are listed as lead or supporting rather than the character name. This is really an important distinction because a lot of casting directors will not have seen all of the projects that you've worked on. So do yourself a favor and explain to them what type of role it was, lead, supporting, background, etc. Now when you're listing your theater credits, there's no reason to do this. Just list the character name. Showing that you know the difference between those two genres is really going to be what's going to help you stand out and make you look like the professional actor you are. Okay, some quick things to leave off of your resume. The first is your age. You don't need to tell casting how old you are. Let them decide the types of roles you can play and you'll open up a whole big broad range of characters that you never thought possible. I wouldn't list awards on your resume unless it's a really big award like a Broadway World or a Tony. If you have a Broadway World or a Tony award, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to leave a shout out in the comment section below, it would be so cool. For those of us that don't have those amazing awards, Congratulations on the awards you do have, but I would leave them off of your resume so they don't distract or confuse the casting director about your credits. But if a casting director does ask you about your resume and asks about specific credits and you have an award on that credit, that would be a great thing to share with them. It's going to tell them so much about you. It's going to show how proud you are of that credit. And who knows, that could be what helps you get the call. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is that your resume represents who you are, not only as a performer, but as a person. I know I've been saying this the entire episode, but it's true. Let your resume work for you, not against you. Don't let anything on your resume distract from the amazing work that you're doing in the room. Because regardless of how amazing your resume looks, it's your work in the room that is going to book you the role. So make sure you plan out every choice, every detail so that they tell the story you want while you're in the audition room. If you're someone who would like a professional looking resume, but maybe you don't have the greatest of computer skills, that's okay. I've got your back. On my website, I created a template that allows you to just type in the information, customize the look, and you'll have a super awesome resume. The link is included in the description below.
Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. I hope you found the information useful. If you have questions, comments, concerns about anything I shared today, go ahead, put them in the comments section below. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more episodes will be coming your way. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the information I have to share and to get notified when I post new videos, please click the subscribe button below. If you're an actor and you're interested in scheduling a session with me, or maybe you're a fellow teacher interested in scheduling a masterclass, you can do so by going to my website. The link is included in the description below. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. I can't wait to share more information with you next time. Bye.